Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Janice, looks like I've got a surprise meeting. Hold all my calls, please. Uh, sure, but my name is Jess. Thanks, Sandy. Since you're here, I might as well show you the tutorial I've been working on. Let's take a look. NVMS 2.0 is now available. Make sure your recorder is set up for P2P or port forwarding already. If you have not done so, links to those guides can be found in the description at the bottom of the page. So before we get started, just like with any setup, we need to make sure we have everything we need. So let's take a look at our introductory setup checklist. First, make sure the recorder is powered on and you can see your cameras on the local display. For P2P setups, you're going to need the server port and the serial number of the unit. For the server port, you can use the recorder to navigate to the port submenu found under the network menu under settings. Write down the server port from this page. You're then going to need to access the NAT menu, which can be found also under network under settings. Either leave the recorder on the screen or simply write down the serial number beneath the QR code. For port forwarding setups, you will need your recorder's local IP, the WAN IP of your network, and the server port of the recorder. Your WAN IP can be found by visiting www.canyouseeme.org from any computer connected to the same network as the recorder. To get the local IP address of the recorder, you'll need to log into the recorder and navigate to the TCP IP menu found under the network menu under settings. Copy that IP address down as well, and then proceed to acquire the server port. For the server port, you can use the recorder and navigate to the port submenu under the network menu under settings. Have the WAN IP written down from canyouseeme.org, the server port from the port page, and the local IP address from the TCP IP page. Additionally, you will need to download and install NVMS version 2.0 found under the download section under CCTV Learning Center under the CBEL download section on securitycameraking.com. All right, that's everything we need. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is open up Monitoring Client, also known as NVMS version 2. When the program loads, we'll have to enter in a default username of admin and a password of 123456. When you can, change this information to something that's personalized. We'll be on the home page as the program starts. We're now going to be adding the recorder one of a couple of ways, depending on whether or not we're using P2P or port forwarding. We're going to start out with P2P, so if you are doing port forwarding, either follow along with us or jump to the time found in the description at the bottom of the page. For P2P setups, we're going to start by clicking Add Edit or Delete Device under Resource Management. On the next page, click the Add button. This is going to populate a new field, and in this window, we're going to click Manually Add. From here, click into the IP address with zeros field you see and this will populate a drop-down menu. Click the drop-down menu and change the icon option to serial number. In the new blank field on the right, input the serial number of your recorder. Leave the protocol set to standard. You won't be able to enter in the port and enter in the username and password of your recorder, changing it from admin if it is not the default and using the correct password as well. When you're finished, simply click OK. It may take a few minutes, but shortly you should see the online state turn from offline to online, indicating a solid connection. Now we'll go over how to add your device if you use port forwarding. If you use P2P and want to see how to access the live view, skip ahead to the time indicated on the screen or feel free to follow along with us. With port forwarding, many networks will not allow a computer on the same network as the recorder to access that recorder using the WAN IP address. So with the port forwarding setups, we're going to be adding two different entries to CBEL and VMS. To organize these entries, we first have to create something called areas. Under the resource management section, you'll see an option called area setting. Go ahead and click that. You'll see the default area present. We need to add two areas underneath the default area. To do this, simply click add. Leave the parent area set to default area and name the first area home. Then hit OK. Add another area. This time, name the area away. Same thing as before, 
make the parent area default area. When done, click OK. We can now navigate back to the home page. We've added our two areas. We now need to put in the entries for our port forwarding information. To do that, go to Add Edit or Delete Device under Resource Management. From this page, click the Add button. When you click the Add button, a new window will populate. Go ahead and click Manually Add. From here, we're going to enter the local IP info for the recorder. Click the field and enter the local IP address. Leave the protocol set to Standard Device. Make sure to enter the proper port information. Your username is the username for the recorder. Change it if it's not the default admin and enter the password for the recorder as well. We need to select an area for this and since it's local, we're going to set it to the home area we created. When done, click OK. While waiting for this device to come online, let's go ahead and add the away. Click Add again, and then once again, click Manually Add. Click the IP field again, this time entering the WAN IP. Again, leave the protocol set to standard. Make sure to change the port to the correct port, the proper username, and the password for your recorder. This time, we're going to be setting the area to the away area. And when done, click OK. You'll notice that the home area is online and the away area is offline. This is again normal as we discussed. Some networks simply will not let you reach out to the WAN IP from inside the same network. If you were to go to a different network, these entries would flip flop. Now that we've got all the information in, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our live view so we can see our cameras actually up and running. You should notice a plus sign tab at the top of the screen. Simply clicking the plus sign tab will open a brand new blank live view. The first window in the grid of four will automatically be selected, and you can see which cameras are available by seeing which ones are online and seeing which cameras are blue. Double clicking any blue cameras will fill that first window. There you go. Hey everybody. Thanks for joining us today and learning how to set up your Seabell NDMS version 2.0. Until next time, everyone, have a great one and stay safe.